Hello everyone. You're welcome to Subject Math. Today we'll be learning about acceleration. Rectilinear acceleration by the word rectilinear. That means the trajectory of the path of the motion is a straight line. So now, concept of acceleration. What is acceleration? Acceleration is the change, increase in velocity per time. Increase in velocity per time. Acceleration is the increase in velocity per time. Increase in velocity. Time. Acceleration is measured in meter per second, correct? It is measured in meter per second squared and it is also a vector quantity. It's a vector quantity because it has magnitude and direction. Now I will talk about deceleration. Deceleration is like the opposite of acceleration. You know, we said acceleration is the increase in velocity. So for deceleration, it's a decrease. When there is a decrease in the velocity of a unit time, so we can talk about deceleration. It's a decrease in velocity. At time, it is also measured in meter per second square. It's also, of course, it's also a vector quantity. But I want you to note that as deceleration is negative. Acceleration is negative simply because there is a decrease in velocity. So this negative sign denotes decrease in velocity. Another concept I would like us to look at is uniform acceleration. Uniform acceleration. Why did the Change in velocity per time is constant, then we can talk of uniform acceleration. When the increase in velocity per time, when the when the increase, when the velocity increase with time is constant. Then we can talk about uniform acceleration. While on the other hand, when the velocity increase with time is not constant, we talk of no uniform acceleration. So quickly, let me explain this. Assuming we have this table, here is the speed. Speed of velocity, we use it interchangeably in meter per second. And here is the time. Okay, the speed here is 30, 40, 50. The time is um, 15, 20, 25. Now, time is in seconds. If you observe this table, you will see that the, the speed here increases. The interval is 10. The interval between here and here, 30 and 40, that's 10. Between 50 and 40 is also 10. You see that the interval is constant. And also the time increases by 5. So with this, we can say that this is the uniform acceleration. Why? Because the velocity increases. As the time is increasing, the velocity also is increasing. 
but for no uniform acceleration. This is a uniform acceleration. Now, for non uniform acceleration, this is what I'm going to have. This is what I'm going to have. Now, if you look at this table, you will see that the time is constant, equal time interval. But you realize that this, you observe this, this, and this. They vary. The interval between this, this, and this is 5. But in this case, 30 to 25, there is a decrease. 25 to 30, increase. You agree with me that the speed here is not constant. Unlike here, it keeps increasing. So that makes it a uniform acceleration. It increases from 30 to 40, from 40 to 50. While in this case, you have 30 to 25. That was a decrease. Then 25 to 30. Then it increases again. So for a case like this, for this type of motion, you say we have a non-uniform acceleration. I hope that is clear. So we have learned that for non-uniform acceleration, the velocity varies in equal time interval. So now we will learn how to calculate acceleration. The formula for acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity. Change in velocity over time. The change in velocity could either be an increase or decrease. When it is decrease, of course, we know we are talking about deceleration. But when it increases, that is acceleration. So change in velocity over time, that's delta V over T. The change in velocity could be final and initial. So when you have V and U, V denotes the final velocity. Y U is the initial velocity then the t is the time taken both of them are in meter per second both final and the initial velocity so acceleration we have this in meter per second over second so that gives us the unit of acceleration I hope that is very clear and uh, well explanatory. Velocity time graph. Velocity time graph is a graph that shows the relationship between the velocity, acceleration, deceleration, and the time taken. Now, the slope of the velocity time graph is the acceleration. This is what the graph looks like. Is usually something of this nature. So this axis represents the velocity, usually in meter per second, and this is the time taken to travel in distance. This slope, this particular part of the graph represents the acceleration. Now, whatever the speed or the velocity is constant, the 
it is represented by this straight line. So this portion of the graph tells us that between this time to this time, from here to here, that there was a constant speed. Constant speed. While this portion represents the simulation, you can see the object was here or the body was there and then it came to rest. So this is the deceleration. This portion of the graph represents the deceleration. Here represents the acceleration. This portion. Because the body was initially at rest, then it moves, it accelerated to this particular velocity, then move at a constant speed of velocity and then come to rest. So I hope that is very, very clear and explanatory. We have an example here. A car traveling has the following velocities for 25 seconds of motion. So now, we have to sketch the velocity time graph. Of the motion. Okay, so we are going to sketch the velocity time graph of this motion. The velocity, don't forget, is on this axis in meter per second. And here we have the speed, the, sorry, the time. In seconds. Zero. 15, 20, 25. I'm going to use the same interval. You can choose whichever interval you have. So at zero, when the velocity was zero, the time was also zero. At 15, the time was five. When the burner when the car accelerated to 15, this is 15. The time taking was 5. At 5, 15. So this is acceleration. 15, 5, we've done this. 15, 10. When the velocity was still 15, the time was 10. So this is what I have. You can see that there was no change in the velocity. That's why we have a straight line, which shows that the velocity or the speed is constant. At 15, velocity 15, the time is also 15. So I'm just going to join these two points. If you still agree with me, that we still have a constant velocity 15, 15, 15. So at this point, the velocity is still constant. When the velocity now is zero, the time is 25. So at 25, velocity is zero. So this is what we have. So by the time I join this point to this point, you will see that the car actually came to rest. And here is the deceleration. This portion, which Tell us the deceleration. Portion C, this portion is C, this portion is A, and this portion B. So the portion A is the acceleration when the car was accelerating. Acceleration. C was when the car was brought to rest. Deceleration. deceleration and here constant velocity the car was moving with a constant velocity which means it was moving equal velocity equal time so the next thing we will 
look at is how to solve problems using the velocity time graph. So let's solve some calculations on velocity time graph. The first question here says that a car starts from rest for 5 seconds until it attains a velocity of 30 meter per second. It then travels with uniform velocity for 15 seconds before decelerating uniformly to rest in 10 seconds. So we are asked to sketch a graph of motion. The first thing we need to do is to draw our axis. Here is the time. Draw a little. This is time in seconds. Speed or velocity. I've told you that we use them interchangeably. So that speed or velocity. So this is my 0, 5, 10. 15, 20, 25. I'm using 5 also. Interval of 5 on both of this. You can choose whichever interval you want to use. Or here I'm using 5, 5 on both of this. That means from here to here, 5, from here to here, 5, and so on and so forth. Okay, so a car starts from rest. Here is rest. It starts from here. For five seconds. So it's moving from rest. For this is five seconds. For five seconds. I'm going to trace that up. Five seconds. Until it attains a velocity of 30 meter per second. So where is my 30 meter per second? That should be somewhere here. So, this is 30. So, where this two line is, that is where I'm going to join them. So, the car starts from rest and, as, and the car starts from rest for 5 seconds until it attains this velocity. For five seconds. So once it attains this velocity, it stops. Then it then travels with uniform velocity. I told you earlier that when they say velocity is uniform or constant speed, it is represented like this. The graph is usually straight line, horizontal. We use this to represent this is the acceleration, like what I just did now. For constant speed or constant velocity, it's straight line, horizontal line. Then for deceleration, it's usually something of this nature. So, they say it travels with uniform velocity, uniform velocity, for 15 seconds. Uniform velocity for 15 seconds. So for the next 15 seconds, let's count. This is from here to here is 5, from here to here is 10, from here to here is 15. So my next 15 seconds. So for the next 15 seconds, we said it has stopped accelerating. So it travels with this constant speed. This constant speed. This is how to represent constant speed. From here to here is 15 seconds. For the next 15 seconds, 5, 10, 15. So from here to here, from this point to this point, it's 15 seconds. Before decelerating uniformly in 10 seconds. So it decelerated in 10 seconds. 5 from 20 to 25. That is 5 from 25 to 30. So the deceleration. This is 25. This is 30. So we are told that it decelerates to rest in 10 seconds, 5, 10. So the deceleration is coming down this way, 10 seconds. Okay, this represents the acceleration, constant or uniform speed. 
uniform speed or uniform velocity. This is the deceleration. And here is the acceleration. So the question is sketch a graph of the motion. This is what we have just done. We have sketched the graph of the motion. Now the second question says, using the graph, calculate the acceleration during the first five seconds. So during the first five seconds, this is the first five seconds. I told you here is the acceleration. So to find the acceleration now, you agree with me that this is a triangle, a right angle triangle. So we are just going to use the formula for triangle. We could either use that or we use the formula for acceleration. So I'm going to start with the first one. Acceleration is equal to final minus initial velocity over time. So the initial velocity here is starting from zero. Why the final velocity is the 30 seconds. So final velocity is the V, which is 30 meter per second minus U, it has the zero over the time. It has accelerated from zero to five, so the time is five. So I have 30 over five, which equals to six meter per second squared. That's my acceleration. Now, the next question says deceleration during the last 10 seconds. The deceleration during the last 10 seconds. Deceleration, sorry. Deceleration during the last 10 seconds. So, during the last 10 seconds, here. Don't forget I said this is not acceleration. During the last 10 seconds, it's still the same formula with acceleration. The only difference would be the negative sign. So we have final minus initial velocity over time. Now, our final velocity here, it came to rest. So the final velocity here, increase it down, is zero. So our V is zero minus the initial velocity before it decelerated. That is 30. So we have 30 meters per second, meter per second over the time. Z 10 seconds, 5, 10, that's 10 seconds. So I have minus 30 over 10. This cancels it. So I have minus 3 meters per second squared. Now our deceleration, the deceleration during the last 10 seconds is equal to 3 meters per second squared. This minus here only tells us that it is deceleration. That is actually decreasing. The velocity is decreasing in its time. That is what this negative sign symbolizes. So the last one now says the total distance covered throughout the motion. Now, for us to calculate the total distance covered throughout the motion, we could do it in two ways. We could either, this is a trapezium, if you look at this shape, we could either use the formula for calculating area of trapezium or we could find the area of this triangle, the area of this rectangle, and then the area of this triangle. Add everything together to give us the total distance covered. So I'm just going to be using the two methods. Now, I will be applying first the area of a trapezium. Because to half the sum of parallel sides times the height, which equals to half these are the parallel sides. The sum of this and this. Now from here to here. Let's calculate from here to here is 5, 10, 15. So from here to here is 15. That means this point is 15. So one of the parallel sides is 15, while the other one is from here to here. So if I calculate that 0, this is 30. So we have 
30 times the height is the distance from here to here, the vertical distance, which is 30 meters per second. So I'm just going to add this. This is 45 times 30. 2 here 1, 2 here 15. So I have I have 45 times 15 and that will give me 675 meters. So the total distance covered is equal to 675 meters. This is meter one. Meter one. Now, quickly, I'm going to use the second method now. For method two, I won't want to rub off this side. So I'll just... I won't want to rub off this bar now. So first, let's find the area of this triangle A. Triangle A. Area of triangle equals to half base times height which equals to half times the base here is 5 and the height here is from here distance from here to here vertical distance that's 30 so 2 here 1 2 here 15 15 times 5 that will give me 75 so I have 75 Meters. Now, for shape B is a rectangle. That is length and breadth. And that will give me the length here, we have 30 and 15, that's 30 times 15. Which is equal to 450 meters. And then the last one, the last triangle, that is triangle C. The area of triangle C is the same thing as half base times height. And that's half times the base here is 10. The here to here is 5, to here is 10. And the height is the side from here to here, which is also 30. So, 2 here, 1, 2 here, 15, and that will give me 150 meters. Now, don't forget, I said, in order to get the area, total distance traveled, I'm going to sum the area of the three shapes under this velocity time graph. Some other times may have more than three shapes in your velocity time graph. So now, the total distance traveled is equal to the sum of all this 75 meters plus 415 meters plus 115 meters and that will give me 675 meters half solid and 75 meters which is equivalent to what we did using method one here is method two so i hope that is very clear and well explanatory i think we've done justice to that question okay so another example we'll be looking at is this there are cases when they won't give you the direct question. They won't ask you to sketch the graph. But instead, they will give you the sketched graph and then probably ask you to calculate the acceleration or deceleration or the total distance covered from the graph. Like the example we have here. Here is the graph. The question says, 
The diagram above represents the motion of the body. Calculate the total distance covered by the body. As you can see already, it's been labeled. So if you look at this first shape, this is a trapezium. If you look at the first shape, this is what we have. We have something like this for shape A. We have something like this. This is what we have. So, here to here is 10. The height here is 5, from here to here is 5. Then we just start from here to here, from this point to this point. That is 20. And the distance from here to here is the same as the distance, which is 20. So from where we can just find the area of this shape is a trapezium. Area of shape A. Shape A is a trapezium. So that is half the sum of parallel sides. times the height. So we have half, the sum of the parallel sides is 10 and 20, that's 10 plus 20, they are the parallel sides, then the height is 5. So I have half times 30 times 5, which is my height, 2 year 1, 2 year 15. 15 times 5, that will give me 75. So I'm just going to put it in meters. Of course, area is in meters squared. But by the time I will be adding it together to find my distance, distance is in meter. So it's going to be in meter. But for now, I'm just going to leave it because I use the formula for area. So for shape B, is a rectangle. Shape B is a rectangle. As you can see, so from this distance to this distance, this is 5, here to here the length is um, 20. So I'm just going to draw what I have there. This is 5, and here is 20, 25. So area is shape of area of rectangle. Length times breadth. That's 20 times 5, which will give me 100 meters squared. Now, for the last part, which is triangle, shape C is a triangle. Area of triangle is equal to half base times height, which equals to half times. The base from here to here, that's 5. The difference between this and this interval is 5. That's the base. Which is 5. From this distance, this is the triangle. I'm just going to draw it out. This is what we have. From here to here, the distance from this point to this point, that is 20. Distance from here, 15 minus 10, that will give us 5. So the base is the 5, the height is 20. So I have height is 20, 2 here 1, 2 here 10. That will give me 50. Shape C, which is a triangle, gave us 50 meters squared. So the total distance covered by the body is equal to area of shape A plus area 
of shape B plus area of shape C. So the shape A gives us 75 plus shape B that's 100, shape C that's 50. So if we have all this together, we have 225. I'm not going to use meter squared. Area is in meter squared, yes I know. But distance is in meters. So, total distance covered is 225 meters. I want to believe that is very, very explanatory. Motion under gravity. Now, for an object thrown upward, when I throw this marker upward, the acceleration due to gravity is negative because I'm throwing it up against gravity. Gravity is acting downward. While I'm throwing this up, it's acting upward. This is gravity. Downward. This is acting upward. So that means if this is a positive, then definitely because it's moving in the negative direction, in the opposite direction. So it will be negative. That implies that whenever it, a body is thrown upward, or whenever um, an object moves upward, now moving against gravity, then acceleration due to gravity will always be negative because it is moving. The, the Earth is pulling every object to itself in this direction, positive direction. So if you are throwing something upward, that means you are moving away from the Earth's gravitational pull. And that means the acceleration due to gravity is negative. So for motion under gravity, there are basically three equations, just like the three equations of motion that we discussed earlier. We have V is equals to U plus Okay, I'm just going to state the three equations, then I'll now show you the differences. So we have s equals to ut plus half at squared, and then we have v squared equals to u squared plus 2g. Now, these are the three equations of motion. But for motion under gravity, the three equations Although they look similar to this, the major difference is that the A is replaced with G. The plus changes to minus and then the, the, the plus also changes to minus. So let's let's Check out what we have. And then the S also changes to H. So I'm just going to write motion for motion under gravity. Below are the equations. So we have our uh, V is equals to U. I told you that A changes to G, acceleration due to gravity, S changes to H, which is height. So V equals to U plus or minus G. Then H is equals to U T plus or minus half G T squared and the last one V squared equals to U squared plus or minus two G H. So these are the three equations. If the body is thrown upward, then this is going to be U minus G T. It's going to be ut minus half gt squared depending on the motion of the body. Now, 
for what you thrown upward. In case you are asked to calculate the time taking for the body thrown upward to also come down. The time taking for it to go up, for instance, maybe the body traveled and took five seconds to attain the maximum height. Then the question says, how long will it take for a body thrown upward to return back to its original position? So that's going to be the time taken to go up. Is equal to the time taken to come down. So in that case, our t we are going to have to be two t. The total time taken. The total time taken is going to be two t. Two times t. The same time is taken for the body to go up and come down. So take note of that. Quickly, we'll be looking at. Um, few calculations involving motion under gravity. So quickly, for this example, a body is thrown vertically upwards from the ground with an initial velocity, initial velocity of 50 meter per second. What is the total time spent by the ball? Now, a body is thrown vertically upward from the ground. Now, having thrown this body, before this body will start coming down, it will attain a maximum height before it falls down. So at that maximum height, the final velocity is zero. So take note of that. At maximum height, at maximum height, for a body thrown upward, at maximum height, final velocity is zero. For a body thrown upward. So take note of that. So the question now says that what is the total time spent? Take note, total time spent. By total time spent by the ball in the air. So the total time spent will be the time spent in going up and then coming down. Don't forget, I told you earlier that the total time spent will be 2t. The time taken to go up is the same time as time taken to come down. So, we don't know our t. But of course, we know what our g is, which is acceleration due to gravity. So, from this, you will agree with me that. Um, Okay, let me just list out the three questions. So we pick which one of them is applicable. We have V equals to U because the body is thrown upward, so it's going to be a negative G. So we have um, H equals to U T minus half G T squared, and then we have v squared equals to u squared minus 2gs. So which one of them do you think we need to use? We don't have h, we don't have... So this is half of it. We have to find t. We have uvg. uvg, we are finding t. So this is applicable. So I'm just going to go ahead. Here we don't have this. So I'm just going to go ahead. Sorry, h. I'm just going to go ahead and use V is equal to U minus GT. Our V from here is 0. Our U is 50. Minus G, 10. We don't know our T. So I have 50 minus 20. 0 equals to 50 minus 20. So 20 is equal to 50. Divide both sides by 10. So my t is equal to 5 seconds. Now note, this is the time taking for the ball to attain the maximum height. This ball is being thrown from the ground. Time taking for it to attain maximum height before coming down. But the question says, what's the total time spent by the ball? That's the total time spent. Is 
is equal to the time taking for it to travel up and then come back to the ground. So it's going to be time taking to travel upward, upward plus time taking downward. And don't forget, we said it's the same time. So the time taking for you to travel upward is five seconds. And the time taking for you to travel down also is five seconds. So that makes it ten seconds. So the total time spent by the ball in the head, those who are going and coming down, is five seconds. Total time spent. Ten seconds.